one of the first things that gets asked is how do you say the company name and um this this might help you ska hoy ska hoy so um, there you go if you're an american you're struggling with this double a and a weird european name then there you have it uh snap a photo of the screen if you feel like this is something you want to remember but that name comes from my heritage in denmark it's linked to my last name and uh we do design and produce our stuff in the kingdom of denmark in europe and our headquarters are in copenhagen we have a north american office in burbank and um a team working there we have an uh, international team basically so in uh, denmark france austria turkey usa poland ukraine we have people all these places working on sales or development or just being a part of our hq uh, team of course and uh, if uh, people ask what is it exactly you're doing we produce hardware panels to ease the control of technology for broadcast and av production so that would be tv and radio live events houses of worship um there's there has been a lot in the corona times uh business corporate also a lot during these times um sports education remote learning and so on so um in all these areas uh, we help people succeed in their control uh experiences and if you wonder why you need uh, hardware controls nowadays i think it's very clear when you're sitting with cameras there's really no great experience derived from an ipad or a software application to control a pdc camera or if you do just visual production you need buttons so you can keep your eyes on the screen and that's one of the reasons why we are succeeding in providing hardware panels for control issues and um, that's that's very important in the line of business we are in in visual content production so if we look a little bit about uh, on our um, various unique selling points that are true across our lineup, because we have like 40 products, but you need to think about them as one product in a certain sense, because each product has the same potential in what it can control. But the, the now I say 40, it's like in that range of different models, it's really a matter of what kind of form factor is the right one for your application. So is it a small tiny panel with only a few buttons or is it multiple panels put together by some of our new technologies to form a large mega panel and um, you're really free to build that up as you see fit um, and not think too much about what we can control as long as you find your canon camera on that list of units that that we uh, do um, control and for a long time we have been working with Canon products like uh, the RCV 100 protocol and uh, I think it's also called remote a which is the plug you find in the Canon camera we have been supporting that for quite a while um, but recently during this year we have worked very closely with Canon to bring out support for the awesome PDC cameras uh, you guys uh, have and also the new C um, C300 series, uh, 500 series, the, the cinema uh, EOS cameras. So they have a great new protocol and they are integrated in our products here. Um, our products are super flexible because it's absolutely configurable. And that will make you run away screaming because you think you need weeks and weeks of engineering time put into setting up your controller. But that's not true. And as you will see today, we have made it even more simple to just add a single camera from some brand is becoming super easy on Skyhoy controllers, but still with the classic and fundamental power that we have been representing all the time. And um, yeah, so this is how we are hitting both the high end and the lower end the simple needs and the super advanced needs that we have this powerful basis and then we have tools and ways to manipulate it that is um uh, giving you kind of the, the cream of it all if you are just into it for the simple solution but we have this configurable engine we have something pretty cool we call it four-way buttons which are in a sense very simple but it just means that every button on these panels are in fact like a little binary joystick you can press the left and the right edges on these buttons and then it will send you um, the information which edge was uh, pushed and sometimes you want to use that to something like if, if you want to adjust the value of a parameter you can use up and down or left and right to to 
adjust the value up and down and left and right. And I was even thinking, Charles, when we talked about some of the exciting things we'll show people at the end of the webinar today, um, there are also times where you might want to control speed and position with something else than the joystick and four-way buttons might fit right in for that. So there's all this flexibility built into our hardware and our software platform. The, it's IP based. So out of the box, we are, um, we, you just plug it into a PoE switch and that's becoming more and more prevalent. So it's really easy cabling and um, easy also to embed into the modern IP workflows we're seeing. Um, we also do have some options, like sometimes you can have special buttons on your panels and um, if you are into that. And if we um, then narrow down on PTC controllers, because that's the main focus of the webinar today, since uh, we do also have um, a lot of products for routing and uh, switching and so on, but PTC is a very important category for us. These would be our typical four PTC controllers. PTC Extreme in the high end, PTC Wiz in the low end, PTC Pro and Fly in between. Uh, we'll be looking at a PTC Fly today and PTC Extreme right here. So those would be the four options. And um, it's also interesting in re relation to, to Canon because you also have a controller. But the, this is again how a Skahoy augmenting or fitting in with your product range. That is, it's not all the time that people need the, um, uh, the amount of features or uh, they, they might be looking for something slightly different or scaled down or the flexibility in the sky controllers. And this is why you see us having such a broad range of products so that we can offer those things that usually are not um, interesting for our partners like, like Canon and, and other manufacturers that are going into these partnerships we, we enjoy with you. Um, you also find how we do this integration by having some units where we have PTC control and switcher control on the, the same unit. Um, these are examples of such products where they are mainly focused on controlling a video switcher, but there's a part of that which is already designed to do PTC control. If we look at some of the new products, we have the blue pill and um, we would we would pitch this as booster technology for our existing products. So it opens up basically new possibilities. Uh, so if you have a Skyhoy controller, if you are investing in a Skyhoy controller, the blue pill is likely to play a role on how you want to use it and, and reuse it and reapply it in different situations. So today we have a, a blue pill here on the webinar, which is actually uh, this little guy is running the, sh the show in a sense, uh, what you'll see later. So. We'll get back to this and you'll see the interface, how it works and so on. Uh, one of the things that Blue Pill does is that it works as a little bit of like a server in a sense that can now bring Skyhoy panels together in a way you have never seen before. So modularity, reimagined, that's like our tagline for it. And it means that previously you were pretty bound to looking at a PC Extreme as a single controller and you had to look at a PC Fly as a single controller and on the frame shot as a single controller, but the blue pill can bring it together into a single controller, two panels in, in a single controller in a sense, by how the, um, the, the, the two panels are being perceived by the system. And when you then map a configuration onto them, they'll just play together perfectly. We'll see that in a moment as well. So this whole modularity, way of thinking is really a, a part of this. We also want to prove that when you, th that's the reason why I use the word invest, because I truly believe when people, they buy into our ecosystem, they will have a good reason to stay and invest to build it out. So they have that flexibility, they can adapt to situations. And that's no matter if you're a church, or if you're a rental house, you'll, you'll find that what you purchased yesterday works perfectly well with what you purchase tomorrow because of this integrative technology we are now bringing out. So um, I, I'm very proud. And uh, even if you want to go on the really high note, this is also a way to help the world not uh, just throw away and buy new all the time, but think about the products that you purchase in a more sustainable sense. Um, I, I, I won't say that's the only reason because it can also it's, it's also a large claim, but at least we are trying to 
to to make something that also makes sense in in this more sustainability line of thought. Um, the RCP Pro, while it doesn't look like something you would use with a PDC camera on broadcast productions, where you have someone sitting with the main concern being control of of the the image colors, the lens, they might want to have a true RCP experience with a PDC camera, and then let the PDC operator be uh, concerned with the pan tilt and zoom positions, and you can make that separation. Once again, because we have this form factor of controlled surface, the, R the RCP, separate from the PDC controller, and they can perfectly control the same camera. So separating those concerns are also becoming really easy with our lineup of products. Also, I think the, the RCP Pro here is, is worth a mention. As, as you can see on the slide, it's uh, the Canon XC protocol, which is in place for not only the CIN 300 and 500 cameras, but also the C300 and C500 Mark III and Mark II, respectively. Those cameras have the same protocol with small adaptations. They have a profile, and we'll see that tonight because we have a, a uh, C300 camera on our network. So it, it's actually controlled from the PC controller, and obviously the joystick won't do any good, but all the settings the camera has are available on the uh, PC Extreme. And if I had an RCP next to me, that RCP would control that camera. So there you also see how I'm pretty sure there will be people invested into Canon cameras and wanting to combine a C300 camera with a, a some of your PTC cameras. So the, the freedom to consider that without seeing limitations in your control um, situation is also very important. I also want to mention that um, lens control in these cases are sometimes an issue. I know that Canon has, has uh, really great lenses, but sometimes people have lenses from other manufacturers, and if there's no way to connect the lens to the camera, Skahoy also has that glue technology that will make it a single unit. I think that's also very important because, again, for the RCP operator, he wants to have seamless control of the lens, but also sensor um, parameters in the camera. He shouldn't have to go somewhere else to do that. Like, And that's what he gets on an RCP. So integrating those things is also a part of our mission to make that easy. And we have uh, great um, products and, and ways to handle that challenge coming up um, to, to enable that, to enable cinema-style cameras to fit into broadcast workflows. Uh, on this slide, we have a few names on our awesome US team, Grant and Tyler. So if you, um, you want to get in touch with our US-based team, then uh, you'll find it there. Um, otherwise, I think we are really ready to, uh, to look at the products. So uh, the, the first one that we want to uh, take a look at is the PDC Extreme, our top-of-the-line controller. And um, let me see, we just want to make sure that you can all see it uh, clearly. So... I believe we have a zoomed in view here. Um, on any Skyhoy controller, you find a lot of the same things happening again. And the signature feature is that we just can't hold ourselves back from putting displays all over the place. We are probably the world experts in having small individual tiles of information associated with your buttons and knobs here. So uh, PDC Extreme is definitely no, no different. And uh, you can see how the, the camera selector I have here on the lower row has labels for my cameras. It says uh, CIN three, uh, 500, uh, 300, and here, and it tells me that it's in the studio. And I have another two uh, 500 and 300 camera in my showroom. And then I have an uh, EOS C300 also in the showroom. So those labels are helping me very much to uh, identify my cameras. I can do the same on presets. Right now, we just have presets one, two, three, four, five, but these are presets recall. And then up here, we usually have some navigational keys. Uh, the first six buttons here are reserved for that. And then we have some direct access to one shot execute white balance on uh, bank A and bank B. We have a shift key that we can use to access additional um, features uh, and also access to a system menu here, which is now activated. So usually my navigation will give me access to features on these eight encoder knobs. And, um, very signature for Skahoy is how when we integrate with Canon's cameras, we are not just looking for the lowest common denominators in those cameras. 
we are going at it on every level. All the, the parameters in these cameras are integrated in our software because we want to make sure that when you get a Skyhawk controller, you can expect it to know your equipment very well so that you have as close as we can get to a native experience. So we get the protocol. We work hard to, to, to respect and support all the features that make a Canon camera a Canon camera. And it ends up on these buttons and knobs. So if we go through these menus, you can see on the home screen, which is where you should have the most important stuff laid out, we have decided to give you access to white balance, red and blue gain, uh, shooting mode here, uh, and uh, gain iris and uh, manual focus uh, speed, sounds a little weird though, uh, and focus position. So these are our selection of the typical you know, anytime I want to operate my camera, these are the most important things for me to have access to. But if I go to the next level, we find exposure, giving me access to um, exposure mode, to iris, uh, gain mode, gain uh, settings here, shutter speed, and, uh, and so on on this one. We can go to the color settings. There we have white balance again. But, and it was also on the home screen, but that's on purpose because now we are dealing with even more things like having... Um, a selector for the actual actual uh, Kelvin degrees here. Um, sometimes we also have uh, access to things if we hold down the shift key because a, a camera like CIN500 definitely have more features around white balance than we can just uh, put onto eight separate encoders. So to um, to give access to that secondary level of things that are often in um, in place, then we uh, we also employ such a shift key here. If we go to details, we'll see um, uh, sharpness related settings, uh, black gamma settings is here, uh, noise reduction, and we have a, a whole page of matrix settings. I don't think it has anything on shift. No, it doesn't. But we have uh, matrix phase, uh, matrix gain, uh, red, green, red, blue, and all these settings laid out on these buttons. And then finally, a whole menu for focus. So that's... that's um, how the PDC Extreme has been laid out. And in fact, the same pattern is found on our RCP and on many of the other controllers. So you will even find that if, if you're mixing a, a 500 and a, a CIN 300 camera, and even if you have cameras from other manufacturers, there's a certain pattern that repeats itself that will give you a similar experience and some expectancy will be um, yeah, you'll be able to expect the same way it operates, although each of these configurations are very model specific to enable those features that are, are unique for them. So that was like a general idea about how this one is laid out. Then we have a joystick, Hall Effect joystick, Zoom Rocker custom made from Skahoy, a roller wheel for focus and iris adjustment here. And I think all that is missing now is that I actually start pulling some handles and, and show you guys that it works. <laughs> By the way, if we, you want to go to the home screen, you can usually push the button on the joystick and it just jumps right there so you have quick access. But let's just go with the CIN500 camera here. You can see it's uh, in our, um, our studio. And now I'm, I'm just moving the joystick here. I am the kind of guy who tends to prefer using the joystick for zoom. And um, the, the thing is that on my... Um, on my PDC Extreme, I do have the option of using the zoom rocker over here. So if I went with that instead, I could also use my left hand to zoom in on the nice Tesla Roadster here. The, the car of my dreams. Come on, Elon, make it happen, okay? H how long am I going to wait? Every time I visited Los Angeles, I usually drive a Tesla car. It's, I, I love driving Los Angeles in Tesla cars. That's just very relaxing. Um, Go away, Corona. I want to I wanna travel again. All right. So basically, um, yeah, you, you have the benefit of the zoom rocker. You have the joystick, depending on what you prefer. And um, by the way, Canon's cameras are awesome in this regard. I want to show you something, and this is not my fault. But if I go really close on this uh, shot, ah, it seems like we are on manual focus. Let's do something about that. Of course, we have uh, one push focus up here. So if I push this button, we'll see that it instantly the uh, the picture is focusing when I push the button up here in the corner. So, but once again, it's just a configuration that we have mapped it onto that button, but this is usually where you'll find it. And um, so what I wanted to show is that Canon's cameras are really smart because when I move the joystick, I'm zoomed all the way in. It's actually ramping up really slowly. And that's so crucial. If you do Houses of Worship production, for instance, you really want to make sure that 
a long shot is also handled gracefully with your camera. And then, of course, if I have a very wide shot, I still have uh, some, you know, level of detail in my movement with the camera. So well done, Canon, on that one. That's, um, that's a quality mark of what you've been doing here. Um, so, and of course, now we were talking about focus. I can, I can also adjust focus here on my focus wheel. So you'll see that I'm bringing it out of focus now, but I can also bring it into focus again by turning the, the wheel. And that's nicely located. So you can use your thumb to, uh, to focus your, your image, to pull that focus uh, on the image. We also have a CIN 300 camera. As I am pressing these buttons, by the way, I am not only changing to a different camera, you also see the picture is changing on the screen. And I'll just do it once again. So now I pick this camera and you see the picture is changing. So for the operator, he has a monitor. And once again, this is a Skahoi thing that it's integration behind the scenes that you may not think about. But this is actually talking to a video router. It is uh, routing the sources of these cameras to the screen in front of me and ultimately on the stream we are watching right now. So uh, more than just talking to cameras, we're also talking to video routers. And in fact, my engineers, they have, uh, th there are many video routers involved because we also need to bring in a feed from our showroom. So that's, um, that's pretty crazy. Uh, CIN 300, uh, so same story. It's a really wonderful camera having many of the same um, uh, good quality uh, features on, on it that we can control from the PC Extreme. If we look uh, through the menu, we'll find uh, much of the same stuff laid out in the same ways. But since these cameras are also different in certain aspects, and to be honest, I am not super sharp on exactly where they are different um, in terms of the features that we have access to. I think they, they have pretty much the same set of parameters available for us. Um, then uh, we, we see much of the same on these cameras up here. I think it's different on the ESC 300, but changing between these two cameras are done easily right here. What I can tell you is that the PDC Extreme is managed by the blue pill. So it's talking to the blue pill. The controllers over here we'll look at in a moment are talking to the blue pill. And this one is also talking to the blue pill. The blue pill is talking to those two cameras and another two cameras and another camera and a, a sixth camera that we are coming to. So this is the brain of tonight. This is the brain. It's, it's in a sense, it's unusual that uh, because I actually have three parallel controls running here. I, if I, uh, now we have the CIN 500 camera, so I can adjust it on this joystick. I can adjust it on this joystick and on this joystick because they are all talking into the blue pill and the blue pill is just having a single connection to one of these cameras. So blue pill is also solving a lot of issues. I'm not saying that Canon's cameras couldn't keep connection up with many controllers if need be. It probably could, but I know devices on the, uh, in the world, in the broadcast world that cannot keep connection to multiple masters. And with blue pill, you basically get a, an entry through which you can talk to your devices with a single connection, but have many masters talking to them. So it's also enabling technology in that way. There, there are really so many ways you can look at it. Yes, there is for blue pill. And let me explain you why that is, because I have it right here. So actually, let's just uh, jump into that on my camera selector right here. We have access to a uh, ESC 300 camera in the showroom. So picked uh, right here and uh, you see it in the showroom now as well. So um, it won't do me any good using the joystick. We agree on that because it's not a pan tilt camera, but it will do me some good if I, for instance, uh, push my uh, focus one uh, push button because obviously uh, it was out of focus. I can also um, go through the menu and, and now, by the way, you see here is a difference because uh, C300 has a different set of parameters available. Although it's the XC protocol, it does not have all the same things as the PDCs has. So um, that's, that's why you see some of these blanked out in the focus menu. We have uh, focus. Um, actually, there seems to be only manual in this case might be the reason uh, the lens might be the reason for that. The home screen lo looks very much like it did for the other cameras. 
And uh, in exposure mode, I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure that we had a few parameters here, which apparently is not available on our um, C300. Um, it has ND filters. I uh, Does the PCs have that too? The C300, uh, the 500 does. Oh yeah, that was the difference. You saw that I'm now on the N5300, uh, doesn't have ND filters, but on the N500, I do have ND filters. I'm just trying to enable it right now. You can't really see it unless I zoom out. Very dark picture now, but I will change that. So we go back to uh, to just having no ND filter. But if I go to, to uh, C300, then I can enable ND filters. Right there, you saw the first level. And uh, I now have the second level on the, um, on the ND filters. And now I'll go back and I open up once again. So there you can see that. So to your question, does it already have a default configuration? Yes, it is right here on the PTC Extreme. But the beauty is the RCP is so similar to the PTC Extreme, if you think about it, that the same configuration structure we have here can map onto both controllers. We call it Pro Class. And Pro Class is a type of configuration in an abstract sense that we provide that will map onto your PTC controller and it will map onto your RCPs. So anytime we support a camera on the one, we also do on the other. Of course, they have individual features like the joystick and zoom rubber and the iris joystick for the RCP naturally. But um, those are also contained in the same configuration, just not mapped down on the individual controller that doesn't have that feature. So I hope that was a little bit of an answer. If if you, um, uh, the, the one who asked the question, if you have history with Skyhoy products, you know that uh, we do provide a lot of default configurations. But one of the things that has been a, a struggle because there is a lot of redundancy easily involved is configuring and bringing different camera models together. That was not easy on uh, the traditional lineup of products. And this is why with the blue pill, all those products that had this issue now ha ha has a new platform that makes it much um, easier to do this, uh, to tap into configurations like that. Uh, yes, you can. Um, and I think the Rack Fusion Live over here would be one of the examples where you have switcher control integrated with your PTC control. And uh, one of the things I would highlight is that, um, so I think we'll just set this aside because this also gives us a chance to actually move on in the uh, presentation of the product. So um, maybe we have a, a, a top view shot here of the um, Rack Fusion Live. And as I mentioned during my slides, this section is dedicated to switcher control. That would be OBS VMAX Livestream Studio. And this section over here is PTC control. In fact, it is a PTC fly uh, pushed into this part of the product. This section has, it has access to all the default configurations we have made for different camera brands. This section has access to all the default configurations we have made for switcher uh, brands. And therefore, they can be combined freely. There's nothing that will hold you back from using any of the systems you mentioned along with any cameras that you want. So that has also been solved in the most beautiful way you can imagine with the blue pill. A, that was a long uh, time standing issue with uh, the Unisketch platform, which is the one that um, now can use Blue Pill to address these issues. So we are very proud about having been able to find such a, a, uh, um, a great solution to this uh, challenge of uh, facilitating individual combinations that we know our customers are having. The only thing that I want you to know is that Livestream Studio is currently not on the list of switches supported by Blue Pill, but VMAX is and OBS is also. And um, it's just a matter of time. To be honest, we have been developing a crazy amount of device support on this over the last quarter. So I, I think maybe before it gets to you, <laughs> it, it might be there. A uh, little o over uh, exaggerated or exaggerated, yeah, but um, should, should be uh, coming up. What I want you to see right now is um, the, the PDC fly along with the frame shot. So we have a top view shot here. Um, the, the rolling displays you see on the video feed is of course not 
uh, how I see it with my naked eye. So that's uh, frame rate and shutter speed, synchronous, synchronicity issues. But um, the PTC Fly has the same cameras uh, listed over here. And um, notice what happens on the frame shot. These two, as mentioned earlier, are both managed and brought together by the blue pill right here. And uh, so it works this way. Whenever I change to a different camera, you see thumbnails of their presets coming up. So guess what will happen if I press this button? You'll see the feed from that camera will hit this framing. And now I press this one. There's a little thumbnail of the Tesla car and the S and the K in the Skahoy logo. So I push that button and I get that, sh that shot. That preset is visually clear to me. Th there's another one here where I... I uh, I withdraw a little bit here I have the drone on the table and so on so the awesome thing about the frame shot is how it now is a, or it is a sidekick to your PTC controller and multiple things are important here first of all PTC fly is a great entry-level controller and you don't need to buy the frame shot at uh, in the beginning the frame shot could always be purchased later so there you see the principle of expanding your uh, your number of Skyhoy controllers and how you can freely integrate them in new ways or use this on another day in another location and so on. And that's all due to how Blue Pill integrates these products. The, the thumbnails themselves are a fact um, because Canon's camera actually has an API that allows us to grab that thumbnail. So the moment we store the preset, we get that. That means I can now find a framing of this camera. Uh, I just found a Skahoy box down here uh, on the floor. So let's see if I can, if I can uh, get to that. Okay. So I now press and hold this key and that will store a preset in the system. And you see on the frame shot, you get a thumbnail in color of that preset. And if you want to redo that. So now just imagine a volunteer in church. Imagine you can go from having a paper list of presets for your cameras to having visual representation on a piece of hardware. We also have thought of a lot of workflow for churches because some of our customers, they, they, they have huge Sunday morning or Saturday night services, which has a full production crew. And then they have other events at other times with a much smaller crew. And with the blue pill, you can essentially load profiles down on your controls or, or controllers. So the, the the large crew, they have more specialized set of options available, but very easily you can just load a different profile that would work on with, with the same panels, the same devices, but offer a, a different set of features for a, a different set of operators like, you know, volunteers that needs a more basic uh, set of options to choose from. But the frame shot is a new product that Skaho is bringing out now because it makes sense now. We have a really great application where these visual thumbnails for your preset recall is now finally possible. And especially the Canon cameras are an amazing product to, to use this with because your cameras support this natively. Uh, we also have sol solutions for other types of cameras um, that does not support it, including I think maybe C300 doesn't, I don't know. But, um, that that just requires a frame grabber in the mix so you have like a third place to get the thumbnail but it can be done i'm just saying that these cameras are really built to do this and as i'm changing over here now i'm switching to the cin 500 camera you also see that my thumbnails are updating and now i go to the cameras which are somewhere else and by the way where is this as I said, this is the camera in our showroom just just outside uh, the room here. So obviously I can also uh, operate this. And uh, I, if I want to make this my, my uh, preset here, then I press and hold. It will grab the frame and show it on the PVC, uh, sorry, on the frame shot. So I can easily recall that. And you already see right now, we have some very distinct uh, presets that I can recall on the frame shot. Um, so by just going through these, you can you can uh, see how um, the the thumbnail that are stored is aligned perfectly with the preset that the camera is going to. So that's that's really nice. A very good application of how the blue pill is making modularity possible in a completely new way. On the blue pill, you cannot 
do it yet. And then again, I'm like, yes, you can. The thing is that it's a feature which doesn't have a UI. So it is in the system. On, on Unisketch, our uh, existing platform that uh, also can talk to cameras. By the way, our controllers doesn't necessarily need a blue pill to talk to Canon cameras. Actually, we Canon cameras, they have the, the Visca protocol in them as well. And the Visca protocol can be operated by um, the, the Unisketch controllers without a blue pill. We are just super excited about the XC protocol because you can see how much we can do with this and um, where we can take it. This is why we consider that the, the new and the exciting vision that we want to, to, uh, to bring out to you guys. Um, and now what was the question anyway? Oh yeah, um, the, the, the movement, can you record the movement? In, in the implementation, in the VSC implementation, we have something we call PDC trace and it will record the speed values being sent to the camera so you can replay them. And that will give you some of that replay the movement action that um, I'm sure that uh, was the intention of the question asked. Um, we don't have that fully on blue pill yet, but it will come um, and it will probably, um, yeah, I can't tell you when, but um, we, the, the long story short is that we have a feature in blue pill with, which is an insanely powerful preset engine and in the most basic sense that preset engine will just recall your preset some settings give it to you whether it's color settings or if it's uh position settings but it can also record the settings on the timeline which you can play back and even in small segments and in randomized order and in all kinds of things so it has so much potential for for visual radio or uh, just having something that you know, just doing automation for even a church service. If you uh, if you want to to save your, <laughs> if you, yeah, if if for whatever reason you need that. So talking about cameras, um, we had those two cameras in here, and the ones that I was operating in the showroom, you can actually see them on the feed here. I think they'll be uh, cut on. So the n camera number three, uh, the one I'm moving here, is actually this white CRN 500, which is out in our showroom. And if I change over to the CRN uh, 300, that's the the small white one here, which I'm I'm just uh, controlling from uh, next door. There you are. But now the exciting thing: can we do stuff on the remote? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a CRN 300 US edition. I am supposed to have um, the ability to control it from my network in Copenhagen. So let's try that, and that will bring us right into the um, engine the interface of Reactor, which is the application running on Bluepill. So uh, you see it right here on uh, on the screen. And uh, you can also see on my configuration page here. Actually, maybe we just go out here and, and give you a quick idea about Reactor. Reactor is the UI that um, manages Bluepill or what we have seen today on Bluepill. So you see that there is a number of panels connected. I have my PDC Extreme, my Rack Fusion Live, my PDC Fly, my frame shot here. Um, if we uh, have a top view on the on the products, can we? Um, oh, I can show it here. We can also identify panels. Oh, now that we have it, so that's super nice. Uh, so if I I press here, then I can identify. Okay, that's my frame shot. That's super fine. And then I can do the same for the PDC Fly over here, just to make sure that I'm talking to the right panels. So just like I have panels, I also have devices that I can work with. You see that we have some ATEM switcher in the system. Then we have a number of uh, Canon cameras set up here in 500, 300s, and the one in the US. We have a video hub as well. And then in the configuration page, I can bring this together. All right. So where I am right now with this um, combination of rec uh, PDC Fly and Frameshot um, configuration, this is the configuration that brings these two together. I press the camera selector button here and I get basically this list uh, here. So if I want to add a sixth camera, I simply click here. I give it a name like CRN 300 US. I um, have to deliver two um, numbers though. I think the first one is my tally index. That is if this camera is a part of a, a switcher uh, tally uh, inputs and um, or however we want to talk about that. So it's 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 not relevant for your camera. But the number six is the device index. Um, 
we I, I really don't know what the limit is of cameras because so far this is the the most canon cameras we have had a chance to bring together so definitely we can control six simultaneously but we can probably also control 60 but they need ids so i put in an id here and then i pick a configuration the configuration there can be many but right now we have only one so we have a configuration to serve the canon xc protocol series right here but that could be many configurations for different purposes uh, simple advanced and and so forth and the fact that I have just added this in my list of cameras in this very simple way here means that when I go to my PDC fly, you'll see that uh, on my camera selector, if I if I just press on the right edge of this button, I'm I'm getting to a new page where I have my camera number six, and that's the one in the US. We'll see if this works. We need to make sure that we uh, we have the camera on the feet. And uh, I don't see the camera right now, so I, I need it on the feed. Yep, there, there we go. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm actually sitting here in Copenhagen and I'm controlling the camera in Charles' studio. Isn't that wonderful? Like, how many thousand miles away am I right now? Um, we have a latency of about 150 milliseconds thanks to uh, the internet. So that's that's the, the data path forth and back. And depending on how quick your video can get transported over the internet is probably what, what determines how feasible remote control of this sort really is. But I do have some latency that means that I need to be careful with how quickly I'm moving the camera around. But it's definitely doable. It's, um, it's definitely doable. So I think this, this proves a very exciting point that also shows how Skyhoy products fit into the new world of remote production, where you can have devices spread across the globe. And um, now I want to mention the frame shot once again, because I do believe that you will have an increased uh, utility of being um, preset dependent when you have cameras on such a long distance because of the latency you cannot expect to follow movements very closely so having presets and being able to have presets on multiple pages like we have on the frame shot where you can essentially have 24 sorry i am not able to do the math here we have 10 on each page so we have 20 presets just by those two pages and of course this is not a hard limit it's just how this configuration is but that will give me an easy way to manage my remote PDC camera. I think that's really awesome. And the final thing that, that I want to show here is that even if you look at my camera selector, where I have these uh, five cameras, I, I do now want the EOS uh, C300 camera to move away so that my newly added PDC camera in California can, can get into that position. So in the interface of Reactor, I am now able to drag the uh, CIN300 US camera just above the EOS C300 camera and you'll see that it just changed its place on the camera selector on the unit. And this has never been done on a Skyhawk controller before. The, previously it was very difficult to move these things around and now it's just like drag and drop and it happens instantly. So that's also really exciting. Yeah, I would say definitely you do because um, I, I know since I did uh, the initial implementation of the XE protocol myself, that just take the, the speed range of pan and tilt, they are plus and minus 10,000. So there's such a high resolution, uh, whether the Canon camera is honoring that resolution down to the last digit. I am not sure about that and I don't know, but my impression is that there's virtually a stepless speed involved on the Canon uh, cameras. There's a little different range on zoom uh, or tilt or one of them, but it is definitely nothing that gets close to the limits that you find on, on Visca cameras. So Visca is heavily uh, limited. We have 24 or 25 speed steps for pan and tilt in each direction, left and right, uh, up and down. And uh, on zoom, it's even worse. You have like seven steps and that's just baked into the Visca camera. So I don't think that the Canon cameras are able to, to do better than Visca protocol allows them to because of these hard-coded limits on on the resolution of the speed. Uh, but on the XE protocol, that's absolutely removed. So that's another top-notch uh, part of how that protocol is designed. I was very pleased to see that it was handled in this way. At this point, no. 
the blue pill is necessary because the blue pill is a completely different processing platform and the software we have written cannot run natively on Unisketch panels. So it is enabled by the blue pill being the mediator and the, the, the product that brings it together. So in, in the lineup you, or setup you see right here where you have two products from Skahoy that is essentially seamlessly integrated, the, the blue pill as a third device makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's, it's natural that if you take this away and all that you want to do is to just control a camera with this, then you may ask, why do I need this? I will say it's just because this has a thousand times more processing power than this one has and it has uh, the future software platform that enables it. So there's no way we can squeeze it into the, the limit computing power of this one. But these two together, they work so well together. And I think the blue pill is a, I think $600, $700 product or something like that. So it should also be affordable for most people to bring that into the mix if you think about the power that it actually offers you. We don't have plans to, to let that be possible. Um, to, be, to be honest with you, we use our laptops to develop reactors, so it does run on my laptop, but the way we put it to market is uh, through the blue pill. I do want to say one thing though. On some of our products, and currently the RCP Pro, our new flagship RCP with the awesome joystick with the display on top and all those bells and whistles, we decided to put the blue pill inside the product. So in, in this case, the, it was very clear that the RCP and the blue pill would be a couple together to such a degree that it was more meaningful for us to put the blue pill inside the product and let that be the brain of the RCP. So um, it, the blue pill in its physical external form is the platform that will make any Skahoy product as of today, work together in this seamless way. And then you'll have a product like the RCP Pro that has blue pill inside because it makes sense in that case. And that's currently how uh, Reactor is available um, to our customer base. Yes, you can. And exactly how they are redundant with each other is something that we have not exactly written yet because redundancy um, if you specify it you need to specify how do you want them to be redundant if there's a fail on one of them how does the other one take over and so on but it's definitely possible uh, and behind your question there might be you might be interested to know a little bit about how the blue pill works we have a very modular system the reactor itself is an application that doesn't control a single device directly what it does is that it talks to device cores and you probably heard about device cores already because this is how we have always been talking about our specific integrations with a specific camera. We call that a device core, the little piece of software that talks the protocol of the, the XE protocol. The Canon XE protocol device core is actually in and of itself a little application that has a network API that Reactor talks to. So the device core for Canon XE talks to the cameras and then it has an internal network protocol on the blue pill that talks to reactor. What that means is that if um, we want to create redundancy, we could actually have such two device cores talking to the same two cameras. Let's assume that they can handle two clients and reactor itself would have now two places to go for that um, for, the, for that control. It also means another thing, which is uh, not relevant with these cameras, because obviously I can sit here in Copenhagen and this blue pill is talking to Charles's uh, CIN300 uh, camera uh, directly over the uh, internet. We are on a VPN, by the way, so we, uh, we are on, on, on a common network, but it's still across the ocean. And if, if we had a latency issue, with the protocol, the XE protocol. And we do sometimes see that on some more demanding protocol, which is more like a real-time protocol on switches and so on. There, we could actually ship the blue pill over to Charles and he could have that locally on his network with super low latency, talking to whatever device it would be. And then on the other side, the device core would be safely connected over TCP to reactor 
at another location in the world. So I, this is a specialty si situation, but it just means that our technology has so much potential to solve some tricky issues that are otherwise not easy to, to solve in this remote connectivity that we are heading into. I just want to give you a glimpse into what Reactor is also going to be. And I'm thinking mostly about the advanced users because what I showed you so far is the easy workflow of identifying panels, finding devices like cameras, setting up a camera selector and voila, it's just going to work very easily. We, uh, we have a, a few other very cool things in here. We have a simulator, which is uh, basically this page and you can see that um, there's a little bit of a um, uh, development feel over this but essentially the simulator is going to be um, yeah simulating your panel if possible and we can see both um, the simulated panel and also the real panel now I'm changing here on this one and you'll see that it's changing in the simulator so maybe just cut to the simulator and uh, we can we can see that. So I, I pick the the camera here, and uh, if I move around in the menu on the upper part of the controller, you can also see this is reflected in the simulator. If I want to change camera on the simulator, I can do that. So there's like perfect interaction between your Skahoy panels and the real world panel, and that's a really a, an impressive feature of the uh, way. <laughs> Of course, we can also do joystick control. Let's just try that. Um, we let's let's go to this CIN 500 camera I have right here. So we should be able to actually move this camera, but we are not. <laughs> Why is that? Oh, but at least you can see the simulator is moving. So I'm saved by the fact that this is a better product. But um, I really <laughs> like how my engineering team made this little visual joystick. It's really awesome. That's that's a beauty. So the simulator is one thing. And then some of those of you who are really interested in knowing how deep can I go in this system, in, in this uh, tab of the system, we uh, have what is called configuration. And that's really a layer-based access to all the features you have inside your cameras. So on this one, you could go to uh, the, the, the PDC Fly here, for instance, mark a few of these buttons, and then you can see the configuration of these buttons uh, marked in, in a layer structure where you have access to these, and then you can um, use the inspector on, on the side to, to see the settings that you have applied. And that means that the bottom line is the type of detailed control you can achieve on your Unisketch panels where you can go to that button and change what it does is also available in Reactor in a just far more flexible way than you have ever been able to do it. So that's some of the things that are coming in Reactor. Some of this will be better when we launch or even alpha, but it's already baked into the system on the most fundamental level. So that's what keeps me super excited all the time, um, having worked on this for so long and really looking forward to bringing it out to you guys.